the world on Welcome once again to the Foley of Man. My name is Chris. We'll be here today. Robert. We're going to be looking at Chapter 11, Factions. Didn't know anyone would willingly walk into this place, not unless they were looking for trouble, which I believe is from Paradise Falls. Cool. For those of you who don't are aren't aware of the show, we are going through the fan fiction Fallout Equestria written by KCAT. And we go through it chapter by chapter and discuss and share and answer questions and everything. So welcome to the show. It's good to have you here this week. It's good shit. It's good, good shit. to be here. It's good to be here, Chris. I'm happy to be here. Uh, the background so, is that I know a lot about ponies. He doesn't know anything about ponies. Yeah. And we're trying to see if this whole thing works. What's our tagline? Chris is a brony. Robert is not. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, recap of this episode. I really liked, uh, this chapter. There was a lot going on. Uh, there was, you know, I, I know it's a shorter chapter, but it, I thought that there was really good character development. Uh, for instance, so we've been sent on a mission from God to go spy on dead eyes, basically. To, and to, get to grab, back and to grab a, a ledger. A ledger. Yeah, to grab a ledger. And dead eyes is an earth pony, uh, uh but a powerful Earth pony, well armed Earth pony, and very influential as he leads the uh, the uh, not slaver, but the slave encampment known right. as Shattered Hoof. Right, yeah, Shattered Hoof, and he's under Mister Topaz. Mm -hmm. We know a little bit more about Mister Topaz, but still not a ton. So, if you had to d describe it as a triangle, is it like Mister Topaz here with God here and Dead Eyes here? Or I believe so. Yes, God. Thereabouts? God was contracted, I believe, directly not directly through Mister Topaz, but uh, under Mister Topaz. And then uh, Dead Eyes was uh, has already worked for, right, Mister Douglas. And and I'm sure there'll be a correction or something. Any any time y'all uh, have uh, comments that you add, or if you're listening to just the podcast, please find us on Twitter, um, which I think is. Oh goodness! It's Crisco Podcast. We have it linked down below. Something, yeah, it's in, it's in the link below, and it'll be linked in the uh, the podcast description as well. Uh, but yeah, we love the corrections because it helps kind of keep us on track. We do read all the comments, and until there's thousands of them, yeah, intimately, yes, we are intimately uh, in tune with the comments as well. Uh, so anyway, so we have to go steal the ledger. Uh, something that I thought was really interesting was when uh, Little Pip. And Calamity are going, you know, they come across the camp for the first time and they're trying to figure out how they'd go in. Yeah. You know, and you know, and in fact, I think there's a note that, you know, these guys really aren't on guard. You know, this is. They're, yeah, they're, they're not used to being raided or anything. So they're all kind of lazy. Right. Well, and we find out later that they're not all necessarily fighters. I mean, there's some other people who are just there because they needed somewhere to yeah. survive. It's supposed to be ex-slaves. But something I think is really funny is that so Little Pip doesn't have a plan. And, you know, it's joking with Calamity that he should not, yeah, Calamity that he should just wing it. And, and, and he infers, it, you know, or uh, Little Pip says, like, do you have any ideas? And he's like, oh, well, I, th I think we should throw them all into a caboose and cut it loose from the train. <laughs> oh, boy, because it worked so well last time. Yeah, the time. last time he improvised and, 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 you know, Little Pip makes a face. And then, of course, uh, he says, or would you prefer we ask, uh, use Velvet strategy and just walk right up to him and say hello? And she does. And it works. And it works. Yeah. And so little Pip does, and it works. Uh, I, I will make a comment here as well. Um, oh, there's two. There's two parts of this chapter, um, which kind of um, one that plays, uh, one that plays like K Cat makes fun of, uh, like she just totally plays off of the game, like she right. just make mocks the game, and then somehow she managed to go back in time and mock us. <laughs> or forward in time to mock us. Okay, so the first one is when they're in the guardhouse, um, and they're and they're ta Pip's thinking to herself about sneaking through and sneaking past all the guards. Right, right. She was remember she was using all of the knowledge she learned in the zebra infiltration tactics book. The book, yeah, I'm glad and you she brought this up. And she says, like to herself, it's not as if the books can only be read once after all. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Which is good. And then the one where she mocks us um, is when she's speaking to Dead Eyes. Mm -hmm. And he says, how in the hell did you get in here? And she says, I, damn it, think Watcher might be on an, uh, might call honesty a virtue, but sometimes the ability to lie your tail off is a virtue too. Yeah. Use magic. <laughs> I used magic. I used magic. I'm a unicorn after all. And he just, it completely plays it off. So magic was used as an excuse in the story, 
It's brilliant. Be- beautiful. It's, I'm glad. I'm so glad you brought that up because I've been dying to talk about that. I just love the line, you know, <laughs> honesty is virtue, but so is lying your ass off sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of those little quotable well, and, areas. Well, and then we find out that apparently that at one time unicorns could do teleportation spells. Yep. And so there's a little pip when they put her in a room is it, questioning, you know. Well, yeah, when the, she's trying to get out of the the, the fencing, yeah. she's like, mm-hmm. yeah, honestly, this place, because it, it, it's a prison. Yeah. It used to be a supermax. Mm-hmm. And um, if if they had built it to withstand anything, they would have re- it, built it to withstand it, teleportation, which is uh, c- teleportation and blocking teleportation are both canon. Yeah. It just, it sounds so severe, shattered hoof. You know, that's such a, I mean, you know instantly that it's not a nice place. No, no. Not no. a nice place at all. Well, and we get introduced to, so we actually use the stealth buck. Yep. Uh, or Little Pip uses the stealth buck. And basically, Calamity's on watch, but he's still injured. His wing is still trying to mend, and he's kind of... Still exercising over- it and overdoing it. <laughs> overdoing it, for sure. Let me see. Is there anything else? I just want to make sure we don't leave anything... Ah, the logs. Oh, yeah. That's how the chapter starts, in fact. Uh, so uh, Little Pip comes across these kind of journal logs. And this is actually something which is intended... It wasn't a shock for... It wouldn't have been a shock for you, really. Like, the naming wouldn't have made any sense. Mm -hmm. This is definitely something for people who like the show because the two characters that they talk about in the suicide logs, uh, Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara, Tiara, they are... They are characters from the show. And so what K-Cat was attempting to do was lie about, like, like make it a reveal that Diamond Tiara was uh, the person who was actually making the logs. Right. I mean, it's not really that big of a reveal because, like, Silver Spoon's only friend is Diamond Tiara. I got you. And they say, my best friend Silver Spoon is like, okay, yeah, that's Diamond yeah, Tiara. Yeah, you figured it out. Yeah, I, I didn't know until there was a cutie mark. But I didn't know the character. I don't know who any of the characters uh, yeah, are. Yeah, so I so. mean, they, if you if you aren't used you'll, to the show, that is, I mean, that that reveal is not. I mean, it's nothing. You'll be pleased and should be disgusted with me. But I I came across another brony last night. Ah, yes. And I'm I'm learning who some of the characters are. So there was like a Kale- not a um oh shoot what's his name the big um Discord. Discord. There's yes. a Discord statue. And I was like, ah, Discord over there. And then there was a like a, a magic card deck box that had Pinkie Pie on the outside of it. And no, 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 it wasn't a magic uh, the gathering. It was a party game because, of course, you put a party game of in course. the Pinkie Pie box. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so it's you're slowly infiltrating my mind. I'm seeing My Little Pony everywhere. Start seeing ponies. Being ponies. Start being ponies. Yeah, be the pony you want to see okay. in the world, or be the see the pony you want to be in the world. Okay, so you also at at near the end of the chapter, as oh, they're right. going back towards God, uh, or no, they're going back towards because they they had to well go remember. To, so so let's let's not forget. So Dead Eyes knows that Little Pip is there to basically steal information, yeah, to be a spy, but he just doesn't know that Little Pip is in the room with him when he's saying that. He she's a lot better than he is. Yeah. Um, but uh, he has to. He asked her to go check on something. As she came back, they overshot and saw the cam- a camper of Red Eye, mm-hmm. which is completely unrelated to Dead Eyes. I actually, I'm not gonna lie, was, it was a little misleading. I me. really, I because re- this, I remember this confused me and as well. Red I eyes would've... are what religious zealots or something like that. You'll find out more okay. about red eye All later right. on. Because if right. you remember, if you, because of the because of the length between the chapters, I will remind you this. Red eye was the one who was talking on the um, the the mm-hmm. uh, bot, the sprite bot. Yes. Okay. I'm trying to remember the name because I like went through every single title. The float sprite, bloat sprite. Yeah. Yeah. yeah bl- <laughs> bloat sprite. Yes, the bloat sprites. Interesting. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, it, that was the one that was on the uh, sprite bot. Uh, so gosh, there's so many things. I, I feel like I, you know, I don't want to leave out. But anyways, so gets the information, and then it could have not told God that Dead Eyes knew about the plan, but does. Yeah. Yeah. And keeps keeps uh keeps the red eye to herself, which is good because if she had told him, he probably would have killed her. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Also, also interesting that he sided with a sl- with a slaver, with slavers. In a slave colony, when they're when they're trying to protect slaves. Yeah, when they're yeah when they're former slaves. Yeah. yeah. No, that was interesting. No honor among thieves, as they say. 
Um, yes, I, even though I really thieves. I mean, come on. Oh, but I don't. I want to finish with the with the logs. It ends in a suicide. Yeah, she kills herself. Yeah, she kills herself so she's not like taken. Yeah, because they would have cut her up and eat her, or raped her, cut her up and eat her, or any combination. Yeah. Uh, cut her up, raped her, then eat her. I mean, not good. Not good. Not good. No. I think we can all. I think we can all agree. And if you at home don't agree, it's not good. No, I'm gonna go out there on a limb and I'm gonna say rape is bad. You are a visionary. You're so, you're so brave. You're such a hero. <laughs> what a new right. idea. That no. is enough. That is quite enough of that. Oh, at the end of the chapter, uh, also unlocked, uh, um, able to run at full speed in stealth. Yeah. So. Yeah. Full, mo- full motion, no, no penalties. That's right. All right. I think it is time for the pony pun of the week. So we were going, <laughs> we were going through it, and we... Um, there is one as I was rattling off all the things from the uh, from the show, um, to Robert. Not not everything, but I was rattling off the, the, the ridiculous names. One that caught his attention was Mayor Duell. Mayor Duell, yeah. Of of all of them. Well, and let's let's also say so. You don't always give me a heads up of what the pony pun of the week is, but no. sometimes you try and bounce them off me to see what what they would. But 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 then you told me so Mayor Duell. I was like, oh, Ne'er Do Well. Of course. Oh, this this is a mayor that never does anything right, and you're like, nope. no, it's a hero. Which makes no sense based on the naming convention. Unless that hero is a villain. No. Bum bum bum. No, it just ended up being a, a ploy of the episode. I, it was a it was a cute name, and it was also when they introduced the concept. I mean, of I get. Batman it. I mean, if you universe. hyphen it, mayor do well. It's like, oh, it's a mayor who does well, who does who does good, you know. And the origin ne'er do well ne'er is shortened from never, so it's a never do well. It's somebody who doesn't about, do anything right. Actually, it would be ne'er do well. Nayer, Nayer, like nay-er. a like a nayer, someone who nays. Oh, oh. Wark, wark, wark. Well, that's the pony pun of the week. <laughs> a nayer do well. There you go. I just invented a pony pun. Of the- I'm sure somebody's already said it. That's yeah. Anyway, <laughs> going on, we have some listener questions. We have some listener questions. One of them wrote down, the other just not so much. Okay, we'll all right. Go through them. Yeah, and and we're gonna keep this brief since we answered what like 12 listener questions last week we had a wealth of them and less of them this week so uh from almanac pony what is your favorite scene from any chapter thus far and why and why uh you know uh a pegasus pony with a battle saddle grabbing a uh, a cart flying through the air and you know unleashing holy hell from above that was pretty cool yeah, yeah, that was, it was, that was pretty damn cool. Yeah, um, my favorite of the of the par- portion so far, um, probably when they first come upon the ghouls, that whole segment mm. because it starts showing Pip's de- degradation into um, into addiction, as well as introducing us to one of the more interesting aspects of the Fallout universe, the go- the feral ghouls. Mm. I actually have a challenge for our listeners at home this week, uh, so. Uh, I want to come up with a pony pun for an intervention. So if you know one, don't say it. But I, w- I want to come up with a pony pun for the for an intervention for Little Pip. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's my challenge. So always please bring us. would love to have more questions every week. But that is my challenge to you to, to come up with a pony pun for an intervention. Mm-hmm. Okay. So on to next, we have KCAT who asks us uh, in... In the uh, audiobook, Crazed Ramblings had to split up several of the chapters uh, into portions. Right. Um, we'll be we will we be doing the cha- the portions or the chapters as whole. I think we're going to be doing the chapters as whole. Right. And the and- reasoning because we're basing it off of the source material, not off of the audiobook, and it makes no sense to break the, those up by his. I hate to say arbitrary. Uh, but his arbitrary guides as to where the chapters began and ended. It needs to stay truer to the source material. Uh, and I would agree with that, and and you'll have to help guide me. But we kind of want, you know, if if you're watching the show and you don't want to watch all the chapters, but there's a particular chapter you like, so you want to kind of touch base and see where we're at and what we think of it, I want you to be able to click the episode and know what chapter we're going to be covering. So that's, you know, that's why we've updated everything to kind of say the chapters we cover in the episode. Obviously, our episodes are still going to be numbered accordingly to where we're at because if we did chapters, it'd be like chapters 11 through 13 or it'd be chapters 4 through 6 and or some weeks just one chapter. Um, uh, somebody, uh, well, hold on. 
Falling Pictures Productions asked if um, if we if we recognize the Easter eggs in Fallout 4 from My Little Pony, and he was saying there's more from Fallout Equestria, but I only really know of the one. Um, in that the radio host in Nuka World was named Red Eye. Interesting. Well, and I full disclosure, I played all of Fallout 4, but I still haven't played Nuka World. Yeah. By the time that DLC rolled around, I was kind of burnt. I'd put like 200 hours into yeah. it. Yeah, and so. uh, but the uh, the one that I know of, like there's a lot of uh, journal logs for uh-huh. some stuff, but like the big one uh, for the My Little Pony thing is you go down to the... Um, you go down to the factory where they built the, oh goodness, what's the name of those robots? But anyway, the robot horses. Oh, right. Oh, uh, yeah. And, um, the, per- and the super mutant boss is called Big Mac. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So th- there was That's that. interesting. So no, I don't know of the Easter eggs, but I know Chris only knows of some. Yeah. I, I want to say, I-, I think I remember some journal logs that were like, maybe they were Easter eggs, mm-hmm. but the verdict was kind of out because right. it- they were so, uh, vague. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, oh, that was you already asked that one. So I think that may. Have I think we're been, covered. I think that that may have been it. Well, real quick, I've got something a little bit off topic, but we'll just touch on it briefly. Maybe we can go it in depth in another episode. But I, I thought that something that's really interesting about the Fallout universe is: what if in the next Fallout game you could actually choose your race? There's different races in that world. Why couldn't you be a ghoul? Or a super mutant. Do they? Do it just be an alternative start thing? Right. Um, well, I mean, because you're always a human and a vault dweller. You're be, always well, not always a vault dweller. Sorry, I know couriers and descendants of vault dwellers, but it, it all kind of hovers around the vault. Well, there there is one thing as well, um, and this is more of a technical perspective, just time amount. Because if you're if you are a ghoul or you are especially a super mutant. You have to rework everyone's dialogue and every event practically for the super mutant because they do it for Skyrim. I mean, that small <laughs> things. I'm talking about like super mutant. You wouldn't have to just say, "Oh, hello, Mister Super Mutant," rather than "Hello, Mister Human." You'd have to go against super mutants are heavily um, stigmatized in this in that universe. And so, well, being every, a talking, say, being like Fox, everybody realistically would be like what the hell is he but doing like, here but so how cool would it be to start as a ghoul and then you don't have to worry about radiation as much but you do have to worry about going insane yeah i mean it's a fantastic mechanic uh but i don't think bethesda is going to work on something that length for this for the game because well it, we also won't see another fallout game for like 10 years yeah on, yeah. The, on the on the timeline that they're working on all right let's make sure oh i just wanted to state a couple of you have said that you you know you do like the video pod the video that we're doing and some you know not so much uh i just wanted to remind you you can find just the audio podcast or you know if you don't want to just not look at the screen and listen uh you can go to the foley of you can also find us on google and itunes uh our rss works with any podcast app i use podcast addict i'm not getting paid by them but i like it it's good for android i don't know what the alternatives for iphone would be because i don't use it but i'm sure you can find i mean you can find us through itunes there yep. so if for any reason you know video is not your thing you don't like our faces you don't like the setup that's great that's totally fine that's why we still have the audio podcast both are completely available yep and let's see here. Anything else? Well, we've got the Twitter. That'll be linked down below. And I think that's... I think that's it. We have uh, a Facebook group we never use. We're but. gunning up for the next chapter or two chapters. I can't remember how much it is, but th- this is definitely leading in. As KCAT said, this uh, the story was originally supposed to be broken up into five books, mm-hmm. which are actually reflected on these. This is Oh, somebody asked whether this was the first printing. No, this is the second printing. I do not have the first. Um, you, weren't, you weren't You weren't on the bandwagon quite you weren't on I was it three that quarter, I was yeah. three quarters way, the, the way through the story when that came out. Gotcha. Um, but this is, as you can see, chapters one, two, and three. This is the first book. Uh, but that's kind of how it was, how it worked. Uh, yeah. It's so, amazing. We're nearing the end of the first book, so. All right. I think that's a wrap. So, for Chris, I'm Robert. Thanks again for listening to The Foley of Man, and we'll catch y'all next week. Chapter 12. Oh, yes. <laughs>